Just a reminder of the Champions League bracket next month. The cross finals get underway. We've got Jurgen and Frank with us. And Jurgen, I want to draw your attention to that tie between Arsenal and Bayern Munich. What was your initial reaction when you saw that Bayern had drawn Arsenal? Well, re reaction was right away. Wow, this is a real game. <laughs> we got a real game here. Um, I think obviously Arsenal has a, a tremendous positive season. Is up up there for the title race with Man City and Liverpool. Um, and Bayern Munich is is a little bit hurt. Bayern Munich is uh, is angry because um, in the German Bundesliga they are actually not doing that that bad. But Bayer Leverkusen is just doing it perfectly. I mean, they have a run. This is just incredible. And they, they ran away, they're 10 points ahead. And, and even if uh, Bayern season is not bad at all, they look like kind of in the second place, like the losers. But they are actually not the losers. They're playing an OK season, even in the Bundesliga. So it leaves it up to the Champions League. And, and Bayern is just a, a club, it's an environment, it's, a, it's an atmosphere in Munich where when the big, big challenges come up, like especially in the Champions League, they're ready. They're ready for it. They they want that so badly. So this will be a, a great matchup, Arsenal against Bayern Munich. Jurgen, talk to us a little bit about the pressure that Thomas Tuchel finds himself under here, because it's a weird situation, isn't it? We know that he's leaving at the end of the season. Obviously, we know what's going on, as you just mentioned, in the Bundesliga with Leverkusen leading the way right now. And then it comes to look at the Champions League, where this is a competition and a trophy that's still very much available to them. Does that just turn the pressure up on him? <clears throat> well, you arrive at Bayern Munich and the pressure is just there 24-7. It's just a natural thing. The, the people there, the fans, the club itself defines itself always only in trophies. They just live off trophies. It's their, their daily blood. It's uh, what they expect. So it's expected that you win the German Championship and the German Cup. That's just normal <laughs> for them. But uh, then on top, it's expected that once every couple of years, you got to bring home the Champions League. And that's how they live every day. And if you have... It looks as though we've lost Jurgen Klopp there, but you can obviously, it's trying to draw on oh, his. <laughs> we lost Klopp as well. We lost Klopp as well, but Liverpool are losing Klopp at the end of the season too. But obviously, Jurgen Klinsmann knows what it's like to be in that position mm. and the pressure that's on there. And obviously, it wasn't Bayern Munich that you were at, Stevie, but to just think of the pressure that is on a manager there to deliver, even if he is going at the end of the season. Well, I think Jurgen sort of. Painted a good picture that you know you're ex it's just expected. The problem if you're the manager or the coach of, of Bayern Munich, not only are you expected to win all these trophies, but when you know that your team listen, you can look at results and you can say that Bayern have got more points this year than they did last year. But the truth is, we've been listening to Tuchel in particular talking from the start of the season to now about things that are going wrong all the time, how they're not performing. You know, he, he never painted any sort of rosy picture. So if you're in the Champions League and you're going into a game against a side like Arsenal, who, as I've said before, have been... You talk about consistent, that has to pile the pressure on even more. It's one thing to get a good draw and be up against a side that you know you can beat when you're struggling yourself, but to go up against a side who you know right now and most departments, other than one, number nine, are probably better than you. That just piles the pressure on. Really will be under the spotlight, especially against Arsenal. I mean, that, that's going to be very interesting because we all know that uh, Harry Kane is, uh, is the best striker in the world and he's, he's going he's to be 100% ready to, to, to bring something. But as, as, as Shaka explained, you know, the prime from Bayern Munich doesn't come from there. I mean, he's going he's gonna to produce, he's going to give everything, and uh, especially against uh, the worst Tottenham enemy, uh, Arsenal, he's going he's gonna to be ready for that. But they really have a prime in the middle of the park. So the, the, the issue from uh, Harry Kane is to be not too much tempted to get the ball and go back in the middle to try to touch the ball and also organise, because he's not going to be at the end for the finishing. So it's going to be tricky for him. Hopefully, he's going to be uh, helped by his teammates. But 
Yeah, I have no concern at all about the performance of Harry Kane. He's going to be there. He's going to create problem to Saliba and Gabriel for sure because he's the top of the top for me as a striker right now. We do have Jürgen Klinsmann back with us. Great to have you back again, Jürgen. We're just talking about Harry Kane, actually, and the pressure that's on him going into this clash. I think, I mean, we often, often, you know, talked about Harry Kane because he's such an exceptional striker. And uh, he did that over so many, many years at Spurs. And now he comes to Bayern Munich and he delivers right away at Bayern Munich in an incredible, incredible fashion. I mean, obviously, he went to Bayern Munich because he badly wanted to win also titles. And now it looks like Bayer Leverkusen is running away with the German championship, at the moment at least, you know. And, and it will be a tough ride in the Champions, uh, Champions League as well. But... He has the quality to be always a difference maker, and he is a difference maker uh, for, for the club already, for the fans uh, in, in the Bundesliga. So his achievements are incredible. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's now crunch time. You know, March, April, May is crunch time. And uh, I hope that he can, con can continue the way he's doing it so far and, and achieves his personal goals as well. Let me get back to the domestic scene then with Bayern, if we can, Jürgen. And Bayern Munich looking likely to finish second this season. How surprised are you with how it's turned mm. out? And how big a deal will this be if they do miss out on the title? Well, obviously for Bayern Munich, it's, it's highly disappointing if they don't win the German Championship. It's because for them, it's just they're just used to it. It's just a normal thing. And uh, so there will be always critics. There will be always disappointment. Uh, but I think in this case, this year, it's, uh, it's not correct. It's not fair to Bayern Munich because I think all, all the compliments should go out to Bayer Leverkusen and Xavi Alonso and the club that uh, has done incredible, incredible all year long. You know, so Bayern doesn't necessarily have a bad season. You know, they have actually a fairly good season. But what Bayer Leverkusen is achieving at the moment and hopefully for them, you know, they can keep up with it for the next uh, uh, eight to ten weeks. It's just a, a wonderful story. It's just amazing uh, the football that they showcase. It's amazing, you know, how they turn games around in the very last second. So that means that they have a lot of belief in their team, uh, that they never give up, basically, culture that they created on the inside of the locker room. And it's fun. It's really fun to watch them. So it's, it's for me, it's um, far more the, the credit for Bayer Leverkusen than it is anything disappointing with uh, Bayern Munich. How impressed have you been with Xabi Alonso as the manager at Leverkusen then, Jürgen? I mean, we're just seeing his numbers here and the fact that they've gone on this incredible unbeaten run thus far. No, Xabi Alonso is, uh, uh, is showcasing a way of uh, coaching this team and guiding this team in a, in a very humble way, in a very obviously knowledgeable way because he's highly, highly knowledgeable. Um, but he always expresses uh, curiosity to to improve his own skill set, to improve his own knowledge of the game, but also of where he is. You know, he speaks uh, fluent German, he's uh, integrating in that area. He knows what Bayer Leverkusen, which is a very, very difficult, different club to uh, the, the likes of Borussia Dortmund or Bayern Munich. Um, he shows how pride, proud he is to, to guide this club um, and, uh, and that he himself is still in a, in a, in a learning curve. Uh, but the way he's doing that is just impressive. It's just it's just fun to watch. It's just uh, uh, great to see that you know a, a manager um, with his experience as the players that he had you know dives into the coaching world and uh, and and yeah and rocks it. He rocks it really well in Germany right now. What should he do next? If you were him and you had the option to stay at Leverkusen, go to Bayern, or go to Liverpool, what would you do, Jurgen? <laughs> Oh no! Don't ask me that stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. I mean, it obviously will happen. It will happen that the big ones are are chasing after him. This is just normal because he showcases a higher quality. Um, he's a very humble person, as I said, a likable person. And there will be the big ones uh, knocking at his door and, uh, and and asking him if he would consider to to come to them. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of changes will be made this summer in the, in the, in the coaches' transfer window. <laughs> and uh, you know, you talk about Liverpool. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp. Who, I'm a big admirer of Jurgen Klopp. Uh, 
now the body he said that he will step down and that decision obviously leaves now a lot of speculation out there who's going to be the next one and Liverpool uh, Bayern Munich made that statement already about Thomas Tuchel that he will leave um, so yes Xabi Alonso is right up there you know in in the uh, in a discussion panel, <laughs> and uh, it will be interesting to see what he will decide. But don't ask me, you know, how he should decide. <laughs> that was a world-class deflection. <laughs> it was a huge deflection. deflection. <laughs> it was a huge deflection. Frank, what would you do? Oh, well, I, I think I think the, the the fair decision would be to stay at Bayer Leverkusen to play the Champions League and to show to the world that you. In a, twice in a row, two years in a row, you can produce something unbelievable. As uh, Jürgen said, the season is perfect. They haven't lost a game and uh, the way they play, the way they understand the game and the way they, they appreciate the performances is absolutely fant fantastic. Now, uh, you know, seeing him at Liverpool after him having been a player to that club would be a fantastic uh, way of maybe following Jurgen Klopp and uh, the way Jurgen Klopp made Liverpool playing uh, will th suit uh, um, Xabi Alonso way of thinking the football so I see as a transfer a very good uh, possibility to not touch too much the, uh, the dressing room even if we're going to see some people leaving and people coming but the way of thinking the way of playing Shouldn't shouldn't change if Xavi uh, Alonso decide decide to go to Liverpool.